Being able to measure a shiv is the most critical step in the accurate identification and reproduction of a replacement part. In this case, we'll focus on one of the most common types of shivs, the flange mount geared traction machine shiv. In our example here, we're using a Titan One traction machine. Let's walk through this step by step on how we go about identifying this as a flange mount geared traction shiv. Firstly, as you can see, the machine itself is a geared traction machine due to its use of a traditional worm and gear transmission and not a direct motor drive as is the case with a gearless machine. Secondly, the shiv is acting in a traction capacity. That is, it grips the ropes, thereby acting on them with a force consistent with the direction of travel of the shiv. Unlike a deflector or non-traction shiv, a traction shiv's rope grooves will have a geometric profile other than a basic U in order to physically grip the rope. Lastly, the shiv is mechanically fastened to the spider assembly directly with fasteners and may also depend on an interference fit as well. This is unlike a hub-mounted shiv, which may involve mechanical fastening and or a key and keyway, but typically relies on an interference fit directly to a dynamic or static main shaft. We can now start out by identifying this and any other similar shiv as a flange mount geared traction shiv. Roping configuration. Count the number of rope grooves on the existing shiv. Next, determine the rope diameter. If necessary, use a rope gauge supplied by most wire rope manufacturers, a caliper, or standard sized ground rod to measure. Then measure the groove or rope pitch. This is a commonly misunderstood dimension. It's simply the distance between the center of one groove to the center of the adjacent groove. It is occasionally called rope or groove centers. The easiest means of measuring this provided there is no damage to the existing rope grooves, is to measure from one edge of the groove to the corresponding edge of the adjacent groove. This is far easier than the precision tooling necessary to determine the exact groove bottom and subsequently the groove centers. Roping configuration is commonly expressed in the following format. Number of ropes by rope diameter by groove pitch. For example, five by one half by seven eighth means the shiv has five cables half inch rope diameter on seven eight rope or groove centers. Now, let's continue by measuring this shiv's outside diameter, or OD. If one is available, use an outside micrometer for the most accurate readings. Otherwise, use a caliper, rigid scale, or a tape measure to determine the diameter. Next, measure the face width. This is the distance across the entire face of the shiv. As with the outside diameter, the most accurate measurement will come from an outside micrometer. However, a caliper, rigid scale, or tape measure can be used. As a side note, many manufacturers produced a solid cast spider that integrated the traction shiv into the spider assembly. These solid cast spiders are non-demountable. The following dimensions cannot be measured on a non-demountable assembly. Let's measure the bolt circle pitch. This is the distance from one fastening bolt hole center to the adjacent hole center. By providing this dimension, we can mathematically determine the bolt circle diameter. Next, count the number and size of the mounting bolts. If there are any push-off bolts, provide the same measurements and specifications as with the mounting bolts. Next, let's measure the bore of the flange. This dimension may be critical and require an inside micrometer or the use of a standard and an outside micrometer for indirect measurement if there is an interference fit on this surface. We'll discuss this further in just a moment. Otherwise, a caliper, rigid scale, or tape measure may be used provided the dimensions can be provided within a 64th of tolerance. Next, we'll measure the interference fit of the mounting surface. This is a highly critical dimension and must be measured using a precision inside micrometer or standard and outside micrometer for indirect measuring. Tolerances for this dimension are commonly one half thousandth. Lastly, we'll measure the offset of the roping configuration. Use a straight edge and lay or support it across the outside of the shiv face. Now, use a depth micrometer, caliper, rigid scale, or tape measure to determine the distance from the face of the shiv to the mounting surface. If both sides result in identical measurements, the shiv is said to be center mount. If there's a difference in measurement, it's an offset shiv. This offset is frequently expressed in terms of the distance from the outside of the shiv face to the mounting surface only.